and breathe out. <clears throat> Gently. Join your palms above your head. Aligning your aura. Gently bring your palms down to your Agnya Chakra. Point between the eyebrows. Aligning your left and right cerebral energies. And gently bring your palms down to your Thar Chakra, Anahata Chakra. <clears throat> aligning your practical and emotional dimensions. Breathe in and breathe out. I'll chant the shloka as you stay with your breath. Dhyana Moolam Gurur Murti Pooja Moolam Gurur Padam Mantra Moolam Gurur Vakyam Moksha Moolam Gurur Krupa Om Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Continue with eyes closed. Rub your palms, cup your face. Open your eyes into your palms. Karamadhyaya and Karamoleru. <clears throat> Let's start the session. Any questions from yesterday's session? Before we uh, start? Anybody? Who's joining for the first time? Ashwini ji, Sri Vidya ji, Chandra ji. All okay, okay ma'am. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so, yesterday, uh... <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Yesterday we saw uh, how what is the preparatory breathing and what breath means to us. What is uh, the mukadauti uh, <clears throat> throwing out toxins, seasonal breathing, and of course uh, <clears throat> we learned uh, the uh, tense and release double breathing and uh, abdominal breathing and we stopped at bhastrika <clears throat> yes so uh, today <clears throat> having done bhastrika let's start today's session with kapal bhati <clears throat> request all of you to be on mute so uh, kapal bhati uh, when we did Bhatrika, we ensured that both the nadis, the left and the right nadi, both of them were cleansed and any blocks in them are removed. So the prana is able to flow freely through the nadis. Okay, so uh, for uh, starters, first let's do Mukhadhauti together <clears throat> with the instructions. Neck and back straight, elbows relaxed, shoulders relaxed. The double breathing approach. Inhale quick, forcefully short and forcefully long. Okay, together. Then tense your body and hold. Vibrate and then exhale and relax forcefully twice. So let's start together. Inhale. Tense your body, tense your body till you vibrate. Exhale with the, through the mouth. Again, one more time. Inhale forcefully short and long. Tense your body. Exhale through your nose and mouth. And relax. Okay, so this you can do five to six times. Then we will do a quick round of <clears throat> Bhatrika uh, today. Both the left and right nostrils in four stages. So, left hand in Gyan Mudra, right hand in Pranayama Mudra. <clears throat> forceful inhalation, forceful exhalation, only from the left nostril to a count of 10. Let's start together. And relax. Now, after your 10 count, on the right side, normal breathing. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
then you start with the right side. Relax. Now alternate nostril breathing. Left to right, right to left is one count. Ten counts like that. Let's start together. And relax. <clears throat> and then both nostrils together. Let's start together. And relax with normal breathing. Now for Kapal Bhati, let's learn together. Kapal Bhati has to be done with the pulsing of your abdomen. And Kapal Bhati is different from Agni Sar Pranayama and other abdominal breathing where here you have to visualize the pranic energy rising from your navel all the way spurting up like a fountain to your head region, cleansing the entire Sushubna Nadi, starting from your uh, uh, Nabhi all the way to your, uh, through your chest, through your face to your head region. So all your thoughts, your thought channels, your uh, neural uh, connections are all cleansed. Any blocks there. So the first two pranayama are cleansing pranayama where both the block, uh, any blocks in the three nadis are removed. So what happens is you're going to pulsate. So there's only one forceful inhalation and <clears throat> continue, uh, continuously uh, exhalation. So inhalation will become, uh, happen involuntarily. People who are into singing, uh, you will be able to appreciate this because when they sing continuously, they don't pause and take a breath. The breathing happens naturally, right? So people who are into bhajans and other aspects. So here also subtle inhalation will happen on its own. Con focus completely on forceful exhalation. Okay, so one deep inhalation and we will start together. We will go to a count of just 60 today it will be uh, 30 uh, at, after every 30 you take a break if you can't do it continuously okay so it is going to be a deep inhalation and start pulsing your navel very gently Relax with normal breathing. Observe your breath. Observe your body. Observe the entire column through which the energy is spurted up, cleansing your neural connections. <clears throat> now let's start another 30 counter. So we will reach a 60 count. Together, you can hold Akasha Mudra because you're cleansing the space in the Nadi and working with your uh, mind space. So your middle finger to the tip of the thumb. Okay. Gentle, gently. Neck and back straight. Deep inhalation. Take a deep breath in. Continuous forceful exhalation for another 30 count. And relax gently. <clears throat> observe your body, observe your mind and observe the impact on your head, main, um, head zone. Okay? This is Kapal Bhati for you. Since it is traveling through your chest, your face and your Kapala, the Kapala where all the blocks are removed, there is going to be free flow of prana. What is the nature of prana? It is a mix of light and heat carrying the life force with a rhythm, right? So light, heat and the sound aspect. So it will start shining. So the kapala will start shining. Bhati. 
Bhati means shining. Kapala means your head. The skull region. So Kapala Bhati helps you get back your shine in your head. And along with that, since it is traveling through your chest and your face, the beauty in the face is also enhanced. The guys becomes handsome, uh, become handsome and the uh, ladies, of course, become more beautiful. Okay. Shall we move on? Any questions? <clears throat> so, uh, just to keep a count and uh, how to do it, I did it with uh, the sound of forceful exhalation. Gradually, you can skip the sound and just stay with the uh, exhalation, uh, which is forceful. Okay. The sound can gradually stop. So, the next important question will be, uh, where is pranayama defined? We have all the scriptures talking about breath, breath control and breath as an anchor to control your mind. Okay. So, the uh, scripture which uh, actually highlights, doesn't elaborate, it only highlights uh, as one of the Ashtanga Yoga uh, by in the Yoga Sutra by Maharishi Patanjali. Now, uh, <clears throat> Swami Vivekananda brought this Patanjali Maharishi's Ashtanga Yoga. So, whenever you are doing yoga, you are not just doing asanas and pranayama. It is not about your physical health. It is about the wholesome, holistic development of the self to evolve into a, a, a higher dimension human being working with the frontal cortex, which we saw yesterday. Hind brain, mid brain and the forebrain. So, we are going to activate the forebrain uh, and enhance our thought processes and rise up from the level of a... Um, reptilian mammalian to a higher dimension okay so the, the uh, ashtanga yoga of maharishi patanjali talks of yama uh, which is your social conduct how you how one should behave in uh, the uh, <clears throat> external world the vyavaharika uh, avastha and you have the niyamas the second one which are about uh, the uh, self conduct your uh, uh, social from social conduct to self maintenance and uh, asanas and pranayama which is again uh, you learn in every yoga class and then you have pratyahara withdrawing of the senses dharana dhyana samadhi they come together as samyama the three together dharana is about bringing focus dhyana is about staying in focus and samadhi is merging in the whatever you are focusing on <clears throat> So, breath is all about air, what we saw in pranayama, going deeper into understanding the science. Breath is all about air, space and muscles. You work on your abdominal muscles, which are uh, the uh, sphincter muscles, the anal muscles. And then you have the uh, uh, intercostal muscles, the chest muscles, the cardiac muscles. And then uh, you have... Uh, the abdominal muscles and the uh, clavicular muscles, okay? So, this is how uh, the uh, uh, breathing is uh, uh, controlled. And uh, this controlling of breathing using these muscles and the space within it is called as pranayama, okay? Pranayama, we already saw what is prana. So, ayama is the controlling or the regulation of the same thing across the cells in the body at the cellular respiration level. So, once you know how to control your breath, you can control the uh, universal I'm breath. I'm making you make you Once you know how to control your breath, you will know how to control the universal breath. And uh, with the uh, controlling the universal breath, you can also control the universal, the cosmic mind from where we all emerge. So we once you control your breath, your mind is in control. And once you have access of that, that is how telepathy works. The uh, uh, You can control the other uh, breaths around you and their minds and the cosmic mind as a whole. That is when they say when you focus on something, automatically, wholesomely, when you focus what you on what you want, it will be delivered to you. Even the universe will conspire in delivering it to you. This regulation can happen in three ways. Samanya Gati, Madhya Gati and Tivra Gati. Uh, Samanya is the gentle approach to breathing, uh, the uh, pranayama. And uh, Madhya Gati is the medium and Tivra Gati is the uh, super fast. So all of us being at our uh, various uh, um, uh, physical uh, dimension and uh, the health condition, we can consider doing starting with Samanya, moving to uh, Madhya Gati. Gati means speed to, uh, to Madhya Gati over a period of a week. And after that, you can attempt 
tivragati if you require if your body permits always listen to your body is the most important uh, aspect so in any of the holistic approaches and if uh, <clears throat> you can't attempt tivragati perfect and anybody uh, who has had a, a, a surgery in the recent past uh, within the last 6 months or anybody with a uh, bp or a heart condition you can't hold kumbhaka uh, that is holding the breath inside or outside and uh, don't do tivra, only samane gati. And others who are uh, in any other uh, physical ailment, you can do samane gati and still be benefited by the pranayama. Okay. So when is uh, one ready for pranayama? You've been following yama, niyama, social conduct and uh, self-conduct. Along with that, asana, pranayama, we are doing in the yoga class every day. So when the body, but with asana, when the body is steady, okay, what does the sutra say about whoever is into yoga? Anybody knows? Quickly, we don't have much time. We have to cover a lot of theory today. Sriram what Sukham is Asana, madam. Yes, Tiram Sukam Asanam. Wonderful. So that is what Maharishi says. But he says a little more than that. Every class you hear Tiram Sukam Asanam and we think that is the uh, um, easy way to remember. So he doesn't tell you which asana to see. He doesn't say Vikshasana or uh, Garudasana or uh, uh, Padmasana, Sukhasana, nothing he says. He just says anywhere, wherever you are, if you are in Tiram and Sukam, mm -hmm. steady and comfortable, uh, that is more than an asana for you. Sitting there, you can do your pranayama. So what is it you need to do? Bring yourself to a steady mode. You bring yourself to a stable mode and bring yourself to a firm hand. That's why neck and back straight, elbows relaxed, shoulders relaxed. So you are steady, you are straight. At the same time, you are relaxed, no stiffness in any part of your body. But that is not the end of it in what he says. He says this is possible. This steadiness and stiff, um, relaxed steadiness is possible. Firmness is possible only when there is... Uh, Perfection in your asana with uh, continuous effort, loosening and relaxing. So this can be uh, seen in an example of uh, Vrikshasana where you start dancing and initially not getting the grip of asana and you take wall support and gradually you are swaying and then you come to a steady mode right and that is possible and after coming into steady mode also you're going to be staying stiff so that you don't fall and gradually what you do uh, when you are uh, not uh, attain that uh, without stiffness also releasing and breathing easily into the asana, then you are in perfect asana. More than that, you have to connect with the ananta. Who is the ananta? The infinite energies within you. Within you, that Sarvagna Bija which we saw from where we manifested, that is within you. You need to migrate into that mode where you connect with that infinity which is available within you and then stay in the asana. Once you attain that level, automatically you are in the perfect asana. Now that you are in the perfect asana with Tiram, Sukham, Prayatna, loosening Shaitalya and connecting with the Anantha. Then, then once you're there, you're ready for your pranayama. So pranayama is your uh, breaking with uh, gati vichedaha. So uh, speed and vichedaha, that is breaking and controlling the uh, inhalation and exhalation. So and with your um, breath and breath practice. Okay, so it can be deep and long. <clears throat> And the vichedaha can be happening in different ways. How do you break, do the controlling? You can do the controlling by holding for a long time. Or you can hold the controlling by uh, doing it uh, using the space within you or the long time, the period. Or you can do the number of times that you are repeating it. Like we counted 60, 30. So either it is the time, it's regulated by time phase or the count that is the, known as the number okay and it can be held within or outside the body so now what are we doing we are engaging the mind did you all observe from yesterday we are talking and we are listening and we are doing pranayama what happened was throughout this journey we have been employing our mind in the practice of pranayama now, when it becomes a muscle memory, that is, you automatically, without your hand support, with just sitting in Gyan Mudra, if you can do Bhastrika, if you can do Kapal Bhati, that is Bhastrika on both sides, 
without using your hand to hold the um, nostrils close and open if you can get into a journey of doing now i am doing kapal bhati now i am doing uh, uh, Bhastrika, now I'm doing Mukhadauti. Every aspect without engaging your mind, without holding your uh, support of your, taking the support of your fingers, if you can my, uh, elevate yourself to that level, that fourth pranayama is the best pranayama. Uh, that is where you will start gaining control over yourself, your breath, your mind and the cosmic mind. So then that is the perfected pranayama. Okay. So... What is the best time to do pranayama? Why should we do pranayama? That is listed here. It is uh, doing uh, good pranayama. Early in the morning is very good because throughout the day, you're going to be in a balanced mind, great enthusiasm and the uh, nature, love and lightness. You're going to connect with cosmic uh, energies uh, when the uh, in the Usha Kala or the Sandhya Kala. Then regular breathing, of course, uh, lowers all the uh, hormonal imbalances and corrects one level of uh, cortisol uh, steroid the re resulting in a uh, the stress hormone resulting in a calmer state and brings you back to your nature true nature that single cell uh, samadhi uh, nature then it also lengthens one's lifespan it heals the body and calms the mind it enhances your circulatory system your uh, glandular system and your hormonal uh, uh, your chakras and they get uh, your nadis of course get uh, balanced uh, and the current starts flowing Pranic energy starts flowing freely in full volume. Okay. And purification of the body happens with that. Then the mental powers get developed. Higher dimensions open up. And with a continuous practice, neuroplasticity will happen. Rewiring of your brain also happens. So uh, what happens is because of this rewiring, your mental alertness, awareness, and any challenges uh, in your body, health-wise or mind-wise, uh, emotion-wise or mental-wise, they all get cleared. Any clogs get cleared and you become uh, arise to a new awakening, uh, enabling a new spiritual level to you. That becomes your uh, step towards the divine. Okay? So, all the sessions that we uh, conduct on our platform, they are all a step towards the divine. Uh, the knowledge is just one side. We saw yesterday, para uh, should the uh, the para vak how uh, para becomes uh, para vak becomes vaikhari uh, uttered through the mouth through various dimensions similarly here also uh, the atma attains the paramatma zone moves into it realization happens when you are able to uh, apply any of this holistic methods listening to your mind listening to your body listening to your soul totally surrendered there that is the journey for all of us. Like I told you, like your hand is surrendered to you, you have to be surrendered to that higher consciousness which will lead you to itself and help you awaken it which is residing within you. Okay, so yesterday uh, one of the participants was asking about how many breaths, how long can we do it. So this is where we start with that. Has she joined today? Have you joined? Okay, I'm not able to see in the full screen. Okay, so uh, we take four seconds for one breath. So um, that becomes, uh, counting goes to 21,600 breaths per day. So four seconds equal to one breath. And uh, <clears throat> that is because in uh, one minute, we are uh, taking 15 breaths. Okay, so that translates to taking it, uh, converting it to 24 hours. It uh, translates to 21,600 breaths in a day. 10,800 solar breaths, 10,800 lunar breaths, okay? Automatically, the body works like that. Every 40 minutes, they change um, uh, the uh, nostrils. If you observe, even now, as you did this, you would have observed one side is uh, dominant, the other side is uh, lesser dominant, okay? So, the uh, similarly, it also takes uh, the uh, um, uh, entire rotation around Earth. It is um, uh, the... Uh, Every one longitude to another, it takes uh, the uh, 60 seconds. Okay, it is 60 nautical um, miles, which is a minute. That is how my minutes get uh, defined based on the longitudes, the imaginary lines that go from the North Pole to South Pole. So that leads to 15 breaths, 4 seconds per breath. Okay, so... <clears throat> 
the journey of our pranayama is to uh, uh, is to reduce the number of breaths so if you're dropping your breath from a count of 15 to 12 a man lives up to 108 years and if he drops it to 9 then he lives to 124 and if he drops it to 6 he lives for 164 years so if somebody is in a state where the static breath is uh, in a um, in like hibernating zone or uh, steady for a long time and tuned into that steady breathing, automatically he is reborn. He, he is uh, kaya, nirmana kaya. He is able to recreate his own body, nirman. He can do a nirman of it and uh, there is no time span for such a person. Okay, Even ailments will not affect them and uh, that is the... Um, journey into this let's explore more on our breath count okay so this is the counter here so the tortoises they breathe uh, four to five minutes uh, breaths per minute so the lifespan uh, is uh, 200 snakes have a breath of seven or eight per minute which is 150 uh, years of course next is man with 16 or 15 to 16 breaths per minute living for 100 years if you look at the bottom spectrum of the spectrum, you have mouse. They uh, have 170 breaths per minute. They live for only three years. And uh, mosquitoes and others live for a few hours. And you can see them. Their breath is super rapid. Okay. And uh, like all uh, uh, shloka says, we have to. We are anchoring our breath. So our scriptures say you have to anchor uh, the. Uh, We have to anchor the uh, thought processes. So uh, the um, uh, shloka also goes that way. Pratama, Pratima, Puja, Japa, Stotra, Di, Madhyama, Uttama, Manasi, Puja, Soham, Bhavaha, Uttamottama. Which means uh, first is idol worship. So you have an external anchor. Then you go into your Japa and Stotra. So you can close your eyes. You don't need an idol to be available for you. You can look, visualize your Japa and shloka and chant and stay there. And then the next level of... Uh, uh, awakening the divine within you is using a um, mindful prayer or mindful uh, concentration on the uh, Ishta Devata and ultimately Soham Bhavaha, I am God, Aham Brahmasmi becomes your uh, prayer and that is the best form of prayer. Okay, so uh, what is happening in our regular prayer, in our regular breathing? If you observe, we are inhaling and exhaling, which I said yesterday by the hind brain leading to a reptilian type of breathing. So what are you doing? Inhaling and exhaling. So 13, three, uh, three or four breaths or it is 15 breaths, 16 breaths with pranayama, without pranayama, you are inhaling, exhaling. So every inhale is equal to so, saha. It's called soham breathing with, without knowledge. You don't have to be aware of it. Every breath of yours is called as when you inhale, it is so. When you exhale, it is hum. So hum. So it breaks up as saha aham. So he enters that air, that cosmic energy enters you within the form of air element and it um, dwells in your body, it circulates in your body and then it brings out the ahankara, all the toxins and that gets thrown out. So soham is a state of breathing throughout and that is known as ajapa gayatri. You don't do, japa means when you're doing a chanting, this is ajapa, without even chanting you are doing a chanting which is you are not aware of so hum so hum so you are doing a saha aham you are taking in the cosmic energy and letting out your ahankara so that becomes that actually uh, energizes and awakens the spiritual being within you and it leads you to a hamsa state any questions so this is not randomly discussed. These have been explained in all our scriptures, uh, the 21,600 breaths and all that. So you have Garuda Purana, the Dhyana Bindu Upanishad, which talks about all this. Some temples also depict this. So and you have a Hamsa Gayatri. The Soham takes you to a Hamsa status. What is a Hamsa? Quickly, one of you. What is a Hamsa? A swan. A swan. And what is a hamsa state? What is special about hamsa? Ma'am, uh, when uh, milk is mixed with water and given to the these swans, they drink only the milk leaving water behind. 
so they can segregate they can differentiate between milk and water the purity and the impurity so hamsa is a uh, um, uh, hamsa pakshi which is a swan which can uh, um, identify differentiate and segregate and stay with the satsanga or the pure form of the uh, kshira so similarly man once he is into his analyzing his breath and going deeper within himself he becomes with the soham bhava uh, he becomes a hamsa and uh, when he becomes a hamsa he can differentiate between atma and anatma he can realize that there is no uh, sukha dukha in this world nothing can affect us uh, no, nobody in this world can affect us it is only for each one of us to evolve in our own levels giving up the six arishad vargas we saw kama krodha loba moha madamatsarya we have to transcend all that and higher levels of Uh, reach higher level dimensions where we can explore the new being within us and for that we need to be constantly aware of the right and uh, the um, surrendered attitude with no right and wrong and accepting everything as it is and accepting everything as it comes so then you become the you will be able to differentiate between hum, uh, atma and anatma para and paramatma okay so you become from the atma level you can become the paramatma so hamsa hamsay vidmahe param hamsay dhimahi tanno hamsa prachodayat so this is the hamsa uh, gayatri and uh, which uh, also uh, one can uh, meditate upon or chant to attain the hamsa status what is the difference between swasa praswasa puraka rechaka for those of you who are into yoga and pranayama you would have heard these words swasa praswasa uh, puraka rechaka anybody who is attending for the first time one is uh, the act of breathing okay in inhalation then the pause after inhalation then the exhalation and the pause after uh, exhalation so can you elaborate on that uh, anybody else wants to try what is swasa what is praswasa what is puraka and what is rechaka puraka inhalation rechaka exhalation ha huh. swasa breathing in श्वासा प्रश्वासा लाइक वी सॉ ये हाइंड ब्रीदिंग इज अ नॉर्मल फॉर इंस्टिंक्ट द सर्वाइवल इंस्टिंक द ब्रीदिंग हैपन फोर्सफुल सॉरी इनहलेशन नॉर्मल इनहलेशन एक्सलेशन एज वी आर टॉकिंग ओके Okay. so when they are indulged in other activities it is known as um, swasa and praswasa inhalation exhalation is known as swasa praswasa puraka rechaka is when you start complete pranayama with conscious uh, breathing a uh, conscious uh, breathing or conscious inhalation conscious exhalation so puraka is purana you fill yourself completely so that is your conscious inhalation and rechaka is complete exhalation throwing out all the um, uh, expelled hair from within the body okay so the only thing is where you are breathing from where is the mind working as you are breathing okay if it is working on survival instincts as we are talking as we are eating as we are indulged in any other activity then it is called swasa prashwasa hope that is clear and puraka rechaka it is conscious Malakadu. inhalation balanga kono conscious inhalation conscious exhalation when it comes to uh, the uh, pranayama approach where you are seated with yourself doing nothing but concentrating on your breath breathing pattern okay so before i move on i uh, saw a question in the uh, is my voice clear is the screen clear yes okay okay uh, yes recording will be shared and then there is a question uh, regarding bastrika and uh, kapal bhati uh, as in both are forceful uh, expul uh, expulsion what is the difference in uh, uh, <clears throat> bastrika inhalation is also forceful exhalation is also forceful in kapal bhati inhalation is subtle okay uh, only one deep inhalation after that continuously only exhalation you are not taking any inhalation till you finish your count of 30 60 120 or 300 as your body permits 
and uh, till then there is no inhalation but there is uh, subtle inhalation without any effort will be happening on its own i hope that clarifies okay so now let's go into swasa prashwasa the uh, terminologies uh, that we going to use in the upcoming uh, next uh, half an hour or one hour so puraka is conscious inhalation rechaka is conscious exhalation kumbhaka is holding the breath okay so kumbhaka this is what increases the lifespan we also discussed kumbhaka uh, should not be done by bp and heart patients so if i give you instructions for holding your breath try to hold for very minimal and let go and continue with the uh, pranayama others can hold as long as possible then stamba stamba means suspended breath and uh, this is very uh, uh, used as a remedy a medical remedy uh, for uh, by ayurveda doctors for people who are uh, patients of continuous cough sometimes paralysis they all do stambita pranayama okay and these are regulated like we already saw by time the number of times we do the space how long what part of the uh, um, space are we holding on and how long are we holding it inside or outside and the uh, time uh, duration i hold, i uh, um do for, for 10 minutes 5 minutes continuously kapal bhati so that is the kind of time count and uh, the first step to pranayama buddha started in sarnath it's a big story so he said when you take a breath uh, you know you're taking a deep breath or when you take a short breath you know you're taking a short breath so total awareness of breath is what will lead you to nirvana he says so those who are done vipassana you will be aware of all of these so um, uh, taking a deep breath and aware of your breath is what will help you uh, connect with your um, uh, no, mind and thereby complete surrendering of the mind and uh, spiritual awakening will happen. And as uh, Buddha suggested, Nirvana is also possible. So we're going to bend the body with asanas, mend the senses uh, with our breath and end the mind with meditation. Okay. So best breathing pa pattern is the uh, stage where it is of no jerk. I told you no sound and no pause. It will be happening on its own chin to chest normal breathing. Uh, I am not going into this anapana, in breath, out breath, anapana, sati, pranayama because uh, we have covered most of it here. We will try it some other time. So pranayama on the theoretical uh, base, uh, those who are into, uh, again, Lalita Sasanama, you will be aware of the Brahma Granthi, Vishnu Granthi and Rudra Granthi to attain your uh, highest level. Uh, so um, uh, this is also applicable to pranayama because now yesterday we saw the body trisected vertically, uh, your Kriya Shakti on the right, your Jnana Shakti on the left and your Echa Shakti in the middle. Uh, Chandra Nadi, uh, Surya Nadi, Chandra Nadi and the Shushumna Nadi. Now uh, we have uh, the body as uh, uh, trisected horizontally. So you have below the nave, the abdominal region. So again, they match with the cosmos. So the uh, cosmic uh, connect is the Brahmanda has also got three. Buhu, Bhuvaha, Suvaha. Lithosphere, atmosphere, stratosphere. The body has also got head, chest and abdomen. Okay, and your abdomen is your lithosphere. Whatever you eat falls into the abdomen. The earth element goes to the uh, earth uh, bounty part in your body. Then you have the chest, which is about exchange of gases, the atmosphere. And then the stratosphere is your uh, space element, the head. Okay, so again, your uh, abdomen is, that is why we head. The head represents the space, buvaha and suvaha. So suvaha, so we held the space mudra when we were doing kapalabhati. Then, uh, as the energy rises from your uh, Mooladhara chakra, the uh, starting, the very base chakra, the first chakra in your uh, um, uh, Sushumna Nadi at the very bottom, bottom of the spine, uh, when it is ri rising, there are three granthis, that is locks. The one is at uh, navel, okay, that is your Brahma granthi. Then with that is in Aramba Havasta. So when you're learning pranayama, what happens? Yesterday you got introduced to pranayama. There was an interest. You got awakened. You were uh, still practicing. You were saying go slow. It is very fast. Then you were like, I'm practicing. I'm not getting a hang of it. So uh, you were doing it hastily and then consciously, then bringing it into your control. So the start, the count was obeying to 
listening to me then when you were practicing it was on your own so when you become more and more aware of what is happening and you commence your journey into pranayama brahma granthi opens up then you reach uh, the ghata avastha why is this region uh, the uh, body called the ghata avastha anybody why is it called ghata avastha the vessel state anybody hello are you all there yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah so you're all there but tell me why vessel state ghata you have kalasha today happy ugadi to one and all as you have started on that note uh, so uh, that ghata avastha kalasha it is um, uh, the body which is represented in the kalasha form circulation and entire body is filled with 70% water right so that is why it is known as the ghata the kalasha concept with three eyes uh, keep a coconut on top why coconut on top coconut also has got three eyes and uh, those three eyes represent our three eyes the uh, right eye uh, sun the left eye the moon and the third eye is your agni so these three are um, also part of the kalasha and so this body is called that is why we call it kumbhaka it is you are holding the breath inside the vessel kumbha means that kalasha okay which is filled with water so the body form has maximum water others are all minor components of the panchamaha uh, bhutas okay then you similar to the uh, you uh, world also the world is also has got 70% water okay then you have now when you can uh, control the breath here and you reach the next level ghata avastha where uh, you, the vishnu granthi is working the uh, <clears throat> uh, solar system it is known as the uh, the bhu mandala now you have the bhuva mandala which is your solar uh, surya mandala and here vishnu granthi opens up you start becoming a yogi and here uh, you can start hearing the uh, sound of a drum in your Uh, vishuddhi chakra your throat chakra and then you uh, elevate to the parichaya avastha in parichaya avastha which is intimate knowledge um, with practice you can control the qualities understanding the gunas and karma here you can uh, mind starts firing here there it starts filling here it starts firing rudra granthi breakthrough happens and the sound of uh, drum from the vishuddhi chakra uh, rises up to the agnya chakra and then you reach the ultimate now the brahma granthi vishnu granthi rudra granthi all opened up nishpatti avastha the consummation state where the um, seeds of karma are burnt out you become gunatita and you can attain become a jivana mukta attaining satchidananda okay so um, uh, that satchit anand state can be attained as you are uh, uh, promote yourself from one avastha to the other avastha okay any questions shall we move on so these are the other uh, terminology what here what was that operasan and psns mentioned on the previous slide okay yesterday we did um, yesterday we did um, uh, 360 degree uh, neural muscular breathing where yeah. we worked on the back the lungs at the back by crushing here yeah yeah it's the same thing where you for you lie down or in makarasana with pressure on the chest okay yeah. so what happens is so what happens is uh, as you can see uh, automatic abdominal breathing starts and your back uh, the uh, lungs at the back start working so your okay. uh, calmness uh, starts and parasympathetic uh, nervous system parasympathetic uh, nervous system uh, gets activated okay yeah so we either do what we did yesterday or we could go into makarasan and do that yeah you can do that okay. so for patients makarasan will help for uh, yoga practitioners uh, neuromuscular breathing all all the 360 degrees you can practice okay so shakti as we saw already in uh, just a reminder again um, a recall a recap it is in its rajasic mode it is prana in its sattvic mode it is manas 
So by altering the breath, mind can pranena badhyate manasa, manasa badhyate pranena pranaha. We saw that yesterday how the mind can be controlled and the prana can be controlled. We also saw that the lungs are divided into three parts. Okay, so the uh, bottom part, the middle part, and the uh, upper part. So the bottom part of the lungs is known as chin bindu, which focuses on udara shwasa. So when you fill all the three layers, the bottom part of the lungs works with the uh, udara shwasa, which is your stomach or the abdomen related uh, uh, cleansing with, and it works, on, it is known as a chin bindu. Then uru shwasa at the chest level, the surya mandala. Here it works uh, on the chin maya bindu. And finally, you have the upper part, which is the griva shwasa, which works on the, uh, which is known as the adi bindu. Okay. So this it relates to the Aparaksha Bindu in your head brain region. So there is a, a sector. You have the sound the hearing part. You have the speech um, uh, part in the brain. The sight part in the optic nerve ends up in one part. Uh, auditory nerve uh, ends up in one part of the brain. And you have those uh, parts, right? So similarly, you have these breathing controlling parts in your mind, uh, which is given in the scriptures and they are called as Aparaksha Bindu. And it is divided into two parts, which is uh, in the frontal uh, cortex, which controls your inhalation and exhalation, puraka and rechaka. Now, when you talk of udara shwasa, that is a lower part of the lungs, it acts on the diaphragm and it activates the uh, <laughs> abdominal breathing, enables the abdominal breathing. And then uru shwasa, it works on the uh, vagus nerve, the 10th cranial nerve, the pneumogastric nerve, which runs the longest nerve, which runs from the brain all the way to your toes. Okay. So that gets activated. That is why they say uh, vagus nerve, if you can activate it, the entire body is charged up again. Okay. And then you have griva shwasa, which works uh, the uh, <clears throat> neck, neck related and works on the soma mandala, the uh, above. So you have the bhu mandala and uh, that is the... Uh, um, earth related then you have Surya Mandala and then you have the uh, Soma Mandala okay which is uh, when you do Griva Shwasa it works on the head region okay and Aparaksha Bindu helps with the inhalation and exhalation the centers in the brain centers which help inhalation and exhalation Puraka and conscious inhalation conscious exhalation okay any questions okay so these are the uh, guidelines Okay, I'll just take, I think there are some questions. Ah, okay. okay. So, uh, next we have guidelines for doing pranayama. It has to be done on empty stomach, preferably at Usha Kala or the um, Sandhya Kala. Uh, then uh, in a clean place with loose fitting clothes, sitting tall on the floor or in the chair with both the feet on the ground. And if you are sitting, Sukhasan or Padmasan, whichever is convenient, Vajrasan for some pranayama, with total surrendering attitude, seeking the presence of the divine and the hand should be placed on the knees in Gyan Mudra. Unless you need the pranayama mudra, both hands upwards with Gyan Mudra. Facing the sun is of great value. It helps you if you can do it in an open space, nothing like it, with a shade. Okay, we don't need, we should not be getting tanned. Then, uh, like already told, high BP and heart ailments. Recap, very important point. Do pranayama only in samanya gati. And do not hold kumbhaka. Okay, no uh, holding of breath allowed. If you are holding it, listen to your body and don't stress yourself. Then people with abdominal ailments or abdominal challenges, hernia and other uh, issues, uh, uh, please do pranayama and samanya gati and avoid putting pressure on abdomen like kapastrika and kapa. Do it gently, okay? Uh, but don't um, uh, uh, aggravate, your, aggravate your situation or condition. Then anulom vilom, brahmari, udgi, sandhyan only for pregnant women. For all other, uh, for uh, pregnant women, no other pranayama, no bhastrika, no kapalbhati and other pranayama. And shavasana, you feel, uh, we will do the guided meditation anyway during the uh, session tomorrow. You inhale through your feet and observe every part of the body as we do the meditation. Okay. Any questions? Okay. 
So we have completed Bhatsika and Kapalbati. This is how many times and how long you need to do. 2.5 seconds each inhalation and exhalation. That gently you need to do it. Uh, that uh, forceful, but it should take that uh, much time to do the inhalation and exhalation. Two and a half seconds. You can see the clock and do it. That will translate to 12 times in a minute, 60 times in 50, uh, 5 minutes. Okay. So Kapalbati, the affirmation is, Whatever is noble and pure, let it enter my uh, body. Now it is entering our body. It has become prana. Now let uh, kapal, with kapal bhati, we are throwing out all diseases by cleansing the mind. So adhi, not adhi. Adhi is uh, the uh, mind where from where the thought starts. And any distortion in the thought is what translates as disease in the physical body. So that is why they say adhi to vyadi. So if you keep your adhi cleansed, then uh, Vyadi will not manifest. So Kapal Bhati focuses on throwing out diseases. We have practiced both. Now we will move on to Bahya Pranayam. Okay. Bahya Pranayam we will be exploring now. Um, anybody into gardening? To understand Bahya Pranayam? <clears throat> Passionate gardening. Anybody here? Okay, so uh, are you aware of what happens if you uh, if the farmer plants multiple uh, um, seeds of the same uh, vegetable and one of them is not flowering? You do you do you know what do they what they do? Anybody? They uh, keep the plant a uh, non flowering plant with a flowering plant and automatically the the non flowering plant starts flowering. Correct. So first they keep, try keeping it with the uh, flowering plants to get the attribute, satsang. So from the satsang, it might start learning that I should flower faster and it might start doing uh, flowering on its own. Now, even then, if it is not, it is kept there, it is still not caught on the uh, true nature of itself. We are all like that plant. We have lost our true nature of being the divine. So we need to be in satsang to elevate the, acti activate or the, uh, awaken the divine within. Uh, so what is the next approach he will do? What is the next approach to the same thing? It's not flowering. So what will he do again? So he will uh, try a trick. Called... Yeah. No, no, no. He will not throw it. He will try a trick called um, stressful irrigation. Okay. Stress irrigation. What happens is he will not water it. All the other plants he will water. He will skip watering it. So what will happen? That plant will start going deeper. The roots will go deeper and deeper in search of water. It will come across new minerals. And then he will watch. Is it flowering second day, third day? And that green will start going and it will start wilting. So then he will realize I have to water it. So what will happen is the day he waters it, it will be so happy. What it was searching, it got it so easily without any effort. With that joy, immediately it will um, receive it. And every, you know how, how you feel when you get water and you're thirsty for a long time. So you're so excited, your every cell in your body is quenched, isn't it? So like that, uh, this uh, plant also gets the same uh, uh, attitude and it, starts uh, blossoming in fact double the uh, flowering of the compared to the other uh, existing plants this is called stress irrigation when the stress happens automatically double the energy uh, is um, exuded okay it uh, gets uh, emerges from the plant so the flowering also doubles so similarly this is what we are going to do with bahya pranayam the stress irrigation we are going to stress all our cells BP, BP and heart patients, please avoid doing it. Others, please practice it with me. Uh, it's a beautiful experience. So neck and back straight, elbows relaxed, shoulders relaxed. Normal breathing. You stay with your breath, listen to the instructions. We're going to take a deep breath in. We breathe out completely. And then we're going to apply three bandhas. These are the three bandhas. Okay. One is your um, mula bandha. That is your anal muscles. We're going to pull the anal muscles up. And hold it tight. Practice up and down. Anal up and down. Anal muscles up and down. Your anus. Okay. Then after that, nabhi. So, navel in, out. In, out. 
you're going to do the locking. Locking means holding it in. And then you're going to apply chin lock, Jalandar Band. So you're going to apply three bandhas, which is known as Maha Bandha, Mool Band, Udyan Band, and Jalandar Band. All the three we are going to practice. Okay. So these three bandhas, very important for other issues also. This will also now, we're going to hold the breath outside and practice with the three bandhas. Any doubts in the bandhas? Now, when we lock the bandhas, those who are aware of chakras, can you explain um, which chakra is within you and the other chakras are outside of you after applying the lock? Observe, you're applying anal lock, you're applying navel lock and then chin lock. So, which is the only chakra which is you are in connect with? All the other Agnya, chakras. Agnya chakra. Agnya chakra. Agnya, you have applied chin lock. It is beyond that. There is no vessel. You're holding Kumbhaka, right? There is a vessel. That Within that vessel, which is our chakra? Crown chakra. Crown chakra is outside. No, I've applied chin lock. It is beyond the lock. I've oh, inside. Locked. You're inside a vessel now. You're inside oh. your... Uh, chest. Anahata chakra. Only your chest chakra. Correct. So only the anahata chakra you are touching base with. All other chakras are external. Nabi locks out all the three chakras below. Chin lock locks out all the three chakras above. You are staying with your anahata chakra. And who stays there? Your atma resides there. You are touching base with your atma. Okay. So that uh, how we are going to practice this neck and back straight. Elbows relaxed. Shoulders relaxed. Take a deep breath in. And breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. For Bahya Pranayam. Breathe in. Fully. Hold. 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 Start exhaling. Exhale. Exhale some more. Pull the navel up. Exhale some more. Pull the anal, anus up and lock the navel in. Exhale completely. Apply the chin lock. Exhale completely. And chin lock. Hold as much as possible. And only when you are ready, relax your locks and take a deep breath in. When you're ready, take a deep breath in, hold and breathe out. You have stressed every cell in your body and you have provided it the much needed energy. So what happened actually when you're doing that, you can also do your favorite japa. Whichever is your favorite japa, you can uh, do the japa because you're staying within your atma, awakening the um, devata who is residing there. So that complete stressing and then when you gave it suddenly uh, the prana shakti which was, was waiting for automatically every cell jumps twice its energy level. Okay. So at that point of time uh, the uh, energy levels is multitude in every cell. It starts shining because that high energy actually triggers the light and your aura also enhances with this pranayama, bahya pranayama. <laughs> Any questions? We will practice it once again uh, now. Before that, I can take a question. Any question? Uh, in this, do we put our hands on the knees and apply pressure? Or... No, no. Gyan in mudra. The... Okay. Gyan mudra or dhyana mudra, palm on palm. So, so touching the thumbs together, palm on palm, left palm on top for women, right palm on top for men. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So neck and back straight, elbows relaxed, shoulders relaxed, normal breathing, normal breathing. Take a deep breath in for Bahya Pranaya. Yes. 
some more. Expand the chest some more. Fill all the way to the brim. Hold. Hold inside. Hold. Start exhaling in stages. Exhale. Exhale some more. Anal lock. Apply. Pull the anus up. Exhale some more. Navel lock. Shrink your navel to the spine. Exhale completely. Chin lock. Hold as much as possible. Outside. Chanting your favorite japa. Continue with eyes closed. When you're ready, take a deep breath in. Observe the impact of the breath in every cell in your body. The mind has become calm. The breath has become subtle, deep and long. When you're ready, rub your palms, cup your face, open your eyes into your palms. So when we started Bastrika Kapal Bhati, our uh, breath was slightly rapid. And as we graduated to Bahya Pranayam, you can see the difference that it has automatically become long and deep. Okay. Now, move on to Ujjayi Pranayam. For Ujjayi Pranayam, you can consider sitting. Uh, here also Bahya Pranayam, diseases are thrown out. And this can be done five times. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ujjayi Pranayam, we have um, um, many methods of doing Ujjayi Pranayam. One of them is the uh, um, Shri Shri Art of Living uh, approach to doing Ujjayi Pranayam sitting in <clears throat> Vajrasana. The others are throat, uh, use throat for inhalation, exhale only through the left nostril. Okay. So what is Ujjayi Pranayam? Ujjayi Pranayam is the snoring. You know, how you snore in the uh, during the sleep time, you have to do it during the daytime. So if you can imitate a snore or mimic a snore, automatically you are able to do it. For those who are into music, you know, throat, open-throated singing is what we call it. So you have to do an open-throated breathing here. Okay. Or talk like Amita Bachchan, you know, that baritone from the base of the throat. <clears> throat> So what you have to do, do put some pressure, uh, put your tongue on top of the thing and breathe, open the throat while you are breathing. Then you will hear a conch, when you keep the conch in your ears, shankha, you will hear some sound, right? The ocean sound, that same uh, sound can be heard here and that same feeling of the air passing through can be felt in your Vishuddhi chakra, your throat chakra. Okay, let's practice gently together without any, uh, this thing, just to see if we get it. Okay, neck and back straight, elbows relax. Try Ujjayi breathing. Inhale with Ujjayi. Exhale with Ujjayi. <clears throat> Did all of you get it? Any doubts? Any doubt? All of you are getting it? Okay. So for Ujjayi Pranayam in three stages. Okay. What you have to do is, I'll give you the instruction. So try to sit in Ujjayi. Uh, sorry, try to sit in Vajrasan and uh, start with Ujjayi Pranayam. I'll give you the count. Three rounds at each stage. First stage is uh, your hands on your hip. Okay. Second stage will be three rounds there. Then second stage is at your chest level. So inhale will expand, exhale will contract at every stage. Even at the abdomen um, stage, you have to hold your on the hips. Okay. Can you see here? Inhale, expand, exhale, contract. And then for Griva Shwasa, your hands, shoulders to the sky, uh, elbows to the sky and palms on either side of the shoulder. Right hand on right shoulder, left hand on left palm on left shoulder. And here you will do three counts. Okay. Let's start together. Uh, order of releasing bandha, whatever is convenient to you uh, in the um, uh, when you're doing uh, the 
bahya pranayam okay so usually the chin is released first simultaneously it happens the chin gets released anal gets released and the navel gets released on its own okay while applying you do the reverse now let's <clears throat> go into ujjayi pranayam hands in your hip uh, at your hip level vajrasan normal breathing with ujjayi inhale 2 3 4 hold 2 3 4 exhale 2 3 4 5 6 hold outside 2 inhale with ujjayi 2 3 4 hold 2 3 4 exhale with ujjayi 2 3 4 5 6 hold outside 2 third round inhale 2 3 4 hold 2 3 4 exhale with ujjayi 2 3 4 5 6 hold outside 2 shrink the navel to the spine normal breathing relax now for the second level at the chest level normal breathing with ujjayi inhale 2 3 4 Hold two, three, four. Exhale with ujjayi two, three, four, five, six. Chest contracting. Hold outside two. Inhale with ujjayi two, three, four. Hold two, three, four. Exhale with ujjayi two, three, four, five, six. Hold outside two. Third round. Inhale two, three, four. Hold two, three, four. Exhale with ujjayi two, three, four, five, six. Hold outside two. Relax with normal breathing. Raise your hands, palms on either side of your shoulder blades for clavicular ujjayi breathing. Normal breathing. Inhale with ujjayi two, three, four. Hold two, three, four. Exhale with ujjayi, two, three, four, five, six. Hold outside, two. Second round, inhale with ujjayi, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale with ujjayi, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, two. Third round, inhale with ujjayi, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale with ujjayi, two, three, four, five, six. Hold outside, two. Relax with normal breathing. Eyes continue to be closed. Observe the impact of ujjayi in every cell in your body, every section of your body. Normal breathing. Relax your body even more. Rub your palms, cup your face, open your eyes into your palm. Okay. Anybody? Any questions? Uh, madam, yeah. actually, uh, inhale uh, with Ujjay means uh, using the throat center point or with the nose, madam? Uh, throat, throat. Thro throat conducted nose like snoring how do you snore put pressure on your upper palate okay okay yeah practice snoring ah, okay. you will get yeah so both we want to do okay yes. correct so three times in each stage is good enough what happens with ujjayi is your throat channel becomes uh, throat channel is your kurma channel your kurma who is kurma what is kurma Tortoise. Tortoise. How tortoise. is tortoise? Equipoised, stable, steady, minded. Right? So, like a tortoise, you will also become equipoised. Can we with back pain issues, Harya, do Bahya Pranayam or any of these intense pranayam? Uh, you can, uh, uh, a good question, uh, we can do this pranayam very gently. 
okay not uh, uh, like you said not intense samanya gati very gentle and not much uh, because you have herniated disc back pain issues uh, even kapal bhati uh, should be done very gently people practicing kapal bhati for a 60 count 120 count 300 count you will experience because you are shrinking your navel to the spine back pain might aggravate so heal your back Uh, with gentle uh, last four we are starting now these four pranayama you do for a month and after that you go practice the first four pranayama package of eight so we are practicing eight pranayama in the session last four you practice which will uh, automatically give you a balance and relieve you from pain so one um, uh, leena ji are you from australia because uh, sanchita ji had shared a feedback a 73 year old lady had a a hairline crack in her spinal cord and uh, 9th and 10th we had conducted in the same uh, last month march 9th and 10th uh, no ma'am i'm here from india okay so yes. uh, okay. so we would have seen if you're part of the mudra group you would have seen on the mudra group the feedback so mm. 9th and 10th we conducted um, pranayama session for the mudra group and um, she practiced on 11th and 12th um uh, and 13th she posts in the group saying uh, from september she was suffering uh, with uh, the hairline crack severe pain doctor had told there is nothing he can do no cast nothing she has to um, stay with the pain or at most take painkillers but what she what happened was uh, 9th and 10th she started practicing these two uh, these set of eight pranayama with that Uh, condition ujjayi uh, bhastrika kapalbhati everything five five times and uh, 11th onwards she is no pain at all she said so she, and she was very happy she said at 73 if i can be without pain it is a miracle for me and that too suffering from september only i know what a uh, severe pain in the back uh, can uh, uh, you know the degree of the pain only i will be able to um, go through or i'll be able to explain not uh, unless somebody exp explain i mean unless somebody goes through it they cannot it cannot be explained that severe the pain is so she said she was completely relieved of that pain when she practiced these pranayama five times each so it is listen to your body and do as much as the body permits first two days may be difficult but gradually you will start finding uh, recover you'll be on a recovery mode and healing will start happening especially with bahya pranayam healing is uh, very very fast okay double the speed of the normal healing anybody else any other question so the next uh, four pranayama so how to remember these uh, pranayama in so many in different names and all that so first three uh, we learnt yesterday is uh, the uh, cleansing the toxin throwing out pranayama which all of us practice today then we had uh, practice the neuromuscular breathing that also you practice and uh, today we practiced um, the all the four again bhastrika kapalbhati bahya ujjayi so how to remember those four are for cleansing and reaching you to a uh, level of doing the regular pranayama so b k b u so any like you open a tap the taps are clogged with uh, either a air block or a um, the um, a uh, nut or a rubber stuck in the uh, pipe can be causing a block so once you remove the block the uh, water will flow freely then you can increase the water pressure and ensure that there is more water flowing in a short time so for that the preparatory was removing the blocks was b k b u bhastrika kapalbhati bahya ujjayi four to remember now when you go to the next four what will these four do they will blossom the sahasrara chakra so bkbu work till your vishuddhi chakra ujjayi worked on your kurma channel in your throat throat chakra so that got activated now we are going to work on the agnya chakra and the sahasrara chakra we are going to infuse uh, now the blocks are removed we are going to infuse pressure and force that is a lot of pranic energy flowing through the channels within the body all the nadis with uh, with which pranayama anulom vilom bhramri udgita and dhyan the last two are not really pranayama but they are leading us to awakening the sahasrara chakra hello ma'am okay yes hello ma'am yes tell me hello ah yes hello, tell me tell me tell ma'am ma'am question i am suffering from l4 l5 and disc bulge plus joint pain sir what pranayama pranayama can suggest me Uh, you you please um, uh, 
join the mudra session we will have a, we will guide you with back pain mudras first and uh, the uh, <clears throat> bulge uh, the uh, disc bulge Bajra or herniated Bajra. disc we'll have mudras for that and after that mudra healing we can go ahead with this okay 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 so I'm, with i pranayama. cannot sit on ujrasana and do other, other no no no, no you sit ujrasana is not a compulsion it is only no. for people who can do it people okay. who can't please sit in a chair and do it that's the first thumb listen to your body Okay? okay, so you can write down if you have a paper and pen, you can write down Meru Danda Mudra and Sahaj Shanka Mudra for your back pain and for your uh, herniated disc. Okay, they'll get corrected. Sahaj Shanka Mudra and Meru Danda Mudra. Okay. So detailed you explanation. You, you will touch it? Okay. I will teach it in the Mudra session. Uh, if hmm. you need to be in the Mudra group for that. I'll share the Mudra group link here. I don't know what timing is there. Mudra group time point is there. One minute. What I time? Will... One minute. I, I have shared the Mudra group link. Click and join the group in the okay, chat okay. box I've shared. And there okay. we will have announcements of when the Mudra session. Mudra session is happening this weekend, 13th and 14th. Okay. 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 So I will share the um, uh, chat. Share it in group, man. Okay poster you. and uh, you can join the group okay so then, no. Huh? no no what what he is not going to so you have bk bu bastika kapalbati bahya ujjayi and after that you have uh, now that the vishuddhi chakra is activated next level will be your uh, a but it is in a but format to awaken it you will uh, we are working on with these pranayama to awaken the sahasrara chakra so what are the pranayama? A but, anulom, vilom, B for brahmani, uyu for udgir, D for dhyan. Okay, D for dhyan. Then, so anulom, vilom, we will start now from here. It is full flow of pranic energy within your body. So anulom, vilom, here the shishumna nadi is awakened when you're playing with both the nadis. And the, uh, from here, the celestial light can be seen shining forth. The divine energies are awakened. Cleansing after cleansing. The divine energies are awakened. Then Brahmari Pranayam is where you work with the, uh, up, uh, the uh, upper dimensions and where you identify conscious with the divine conscious. Atma and the uh, Paramatma uh, knowledge comes in. And then you move on to Udgit where you connect with the Omkara, the primordial sound, the sound or the cosmic rhythm from where this universe manifested and con continue to that Samadhi level. That Bija Swarupa, what was the Bija? What was the nature of that Bija? Complete silence. It knew that it can become a tree uh, to the extent of a trunk, branch, leaves, flowers and fruits. But still it was in a, a state, a stable, steady mode. Okay. We have to reach with all the knowledge, silence the mind and stay in a Purna Kumbhaka form. Okay, so ignorant person is also idle um, uh, and a lazy person is also idle, no knowledge. A fully knowledgeable person is also in a Purna Kumbhaka, seems idle but has the entire knowledge. Okay, so that is why they say you can't make out a difference between a yogi and a murak. Both will look the same, both are brushing their teeth. The difference is one is Purna Kumbhaka. The, uh, it's not an empty vessel, it is a uh, filled vessel. Fill to the brim with knowledge. Okay. So, Anulom Vilom is alternate nostril breathing. With alternate nostril breathing, we are also going to have holding the breath. Okay. She would have enjoyed it. Yesterday, she was asking about the time counter and all. So, so <clears throat> inhale and exhale. Anulom Vilom is just without holding. So, we will do two rounds of it. And after that, we will go to... Um, Nadi Shodhana, where we are going to do um, uh, deep uh, inhalation, exhalation with holding the breath in between. And with Nadi Shodhana, the first time we will uh, do two rounds with the same one is to one is to one is to one, is to one ratio. One is to one is to one. That is if it is a four count, four, four, four inhale, four, four hold, four exhale, four hold outside and then start inhaling. That we will do two counts and then you will do um, one, four, two, one. Okay. So one is two. The ratio is one, four, two, one. So if you hold for one count, you inhale for one count, hold for four count, exhale for two count, 
hold outside for one count. So if it is two, two, eight, four, two. Okay, then you can go to eight, 32. Uh, gradually you go over a week's time. Today we will do only two counter. So uh, eight will go into uh, 32, 16, eight. Okay, when you add it up, it will be 32 plus 32, 64. So one breath will come to 64 seconds, which is one minute. You become a yogi with that. So if you can gradually two count of two, two, four, two, eight, four, two. Then you try with five, five, 20, 10, five. Then you try with six. Okay, six, uh, six fours are uh, 24, uh, 12, six. Then you go to eight. 8, 32, 16, 8. You add them up, one breath will be, uh, one round will be your one breath, which will be uh, 60 seconds, which means you are a yogi and you can, but can you do it all through the day is a challenge. So the yogis who are profound in that, who have reached that level, who are Siddhis, uh, who have attained Siddhis, they are capable of doing it all through the day. Okay, so, uh, that is why I said even A, but Anulom, Vilom, Brahmari, Udgi, Dhyan, Anilji, that also can help cure you of your pain. Uh, all these pranayama help uh, you get rid of the pain. Okay. And uh, uh, along with that, uh, first the pain goes and then the body structure healing will start setting in. Okay. So Anulom, Vilom in uh, alternate nostril without holding, then in the ratios, equal ratio. And then, so the interesting aspect is that scriptures tell you, in what ratio should you do it? And when you do it in these ratios, uh, what awakens within you? So there is a ratio called 132, which actually brings out the Shiva Tattva within you. Then this ratio of 1421, it brings in the divine light, awakens the divine light within you. Various scriptures talks about it, the count and all that. So we will not go very deep. We will stick with the uh, basic and uh, understanding the uh, fundamentals here. So left hand in Gyan Mudra, right hand in Pranaya Mudra, normal breathing. Gently breathe. And then let's start with Anulom. Inhale through left. Now deep and long. I won't be giving the instruction. It has to be deep and long. Exhale through right. Completely enable to spine. Inhale through right. Deep and long. Exhale through left. Completely. Second round, inhale through left, exhale through right, inhale through right, exhale through left. Thumb rule is inhale and observe, hold and heal, exhale and relax. So every inhalation observe, every exhalation relax because every inhalation energizes the body, every exhalation relaxes the body. If you give this mindset or your orders to your subconscious level, every breath will turn out to be a magic for you, energy saver for you. Inhalation will energize, exhalation will relax. Now let's do it together with counter for Nadi Shodhana. Inhale. Hold, 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 hold. Exhale, exhale some more, exhale some more, exhale completely. Hold outside, hold outside, hold outside, hold outside. Inhale from the right. Inhale some more, inhale some more, inhale fully. Hold two, three, four, exhale from the left. Exhale some more, exhale some more, exhale completely. Hold outside, two, three, four. Second round, inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold outside, two, three, four. Inhale from right, two, three. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale from left, two, three. Four, hold outside, two, three, four. Relax with normal breathing. Two rounds of equal count done. Now in the ratio one, four, two, one. Let's start together. Left hand in Gyan Mudra, right hand in Pranayam Mudra. Start from the left nostril. Inhale, two, hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two. 
hold outside. Inhale from the right. Hold two, three, four. Exhale from the left. Two, hold outside. One. Now with the ratio two, eight, four, two. Inhale from the left. Two. Hold two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale from the right. Two, three, four. Hold outside. Two. Inhale from the right. Two. Hold two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale from the left. Two, three, four. Hold outside. Two. Second round. Inhale two from the left. Hold two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale from the right. Two, three, four. Hold outside. Two. Inhale from the right. Two. Hold two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale from the left. Two, three, four. Hold outside. Two. Continue with thighs closed, normal breathing. Observe your breath, observe your body, observe your mind. You were totally unaware of the body. You were just anchored to your breath. Your mind was totally engrossed in your breath and the count. Now gently rub your palms, cup your face, open your eyes into your palms. Now we'll move on to Brahmari Pranayam, a very important Pranayam <clears throat> for cleansing any mental clog or issues in the mind, especially people who are not getting sleep in the night, practice this every night before sleeping. Practice this every night before sleeping, you will get sound sleep. Okay, and those who have depression, anxiety, stress, you also should practice, uh, if possible, every hour or at least thrice or four times a day. Brahmari Pranayam. Okay, this is like inhale and exhale with a high pitched humming sound. How Lata Mangeshwar sings high uh, pitched songs. Okay, like that high pitched humming, humming sound. So, this is called as Brahmari. Brahmari is the sound of a B. Okay. Any questions? Shall we start? Ma'am, you have okay. mentioned Shanmukhi Mudra here. What yeah. is that? Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to show oh. you how to hold Shanmukhi Mudra. So those who have attended the uh, Mudra session, you are aware that uh, we have uh, Panchamukhi Mudra, Shanmukhi Mudra. So... Um, <clears throat> When all the five fingers are done, uh, namaste, you join your palms to do namaste, what happens? All the five elements in your left hand, the organ system here and the organ system here becomes balanced. Okay? Now, when you want to increase the elements, then you hold it like this. This is known as pancha mukhi mudra. Every mukha, mukha of the finger, little finger to mukha of the little finger. This is the head, right? The face. So, this is how you hold it. Pancha mukhi mudra. Okay, so it is Dvimukhi, 1, 2, Dvimukhi, 3 Mukhi, Chatur Mukhi, Pancha Mukhi. This is Pancha Mukhi Mudra. Dvimukhi, 3 Mukhi, Chatur Mukhi, Pancha Mukhi. So this is Pancha Mukhi Mudra. Shan Mukhi Mudra is held like this, where the little fingers are opened up. The sixth dimension in you opens up the mind aspect. Okay, the Chitta. So that Chitta Akasha is where you're going to work. So Pancha Mukhi Mudra is the little finger opened out. Now, you would apply this mudra, create a circuit using these shan mukhis, the um, other elements joining at the circuit is completed like this. So, how to hold this mudra? Uh, I have seen various uh, pranayama classes just doing this and saying you applied shan mukhi mudra. No, you are closing your sense organs using this shan mukhi mudra. Thumbs on the ears, don't do it, listen to me. Then, Two fingers, index finger, middle finger on either side of your eye, bridge on the nose. Because your the rule for eyes is you should never rub your eye or touch your eye. You can only, even for massage, they don't touch your eye. They only place a wool soaked in, uh, cotton soaked in rose water on the eye. Nobody, none of 
the beautician, beauty parlor uh, technicians will touch your eye. They will only massage around the eye. So you are also supposed to do the same thing. Put your two fingers on either side, covering the eye on the nose bridge. The ring finger will be touching either side of the nostrils base and little finger is opened out. So let's do it together. And how are you going to be uh, inhaling? So you're going to take a deep breath in to the count I give you. Exhale with a high pitched humming sound. Mm. This sound will work in your uh, brain region, your head region. And that sound, echo and the sound will cleanse any issues there and brings clarity and light it, lights it up. That sound will go and trigger all the neurons and uh, uh, stimulate them. Okay. So your thumbs on your ears. Two fingers on either side of the nose bridge covering the eye. Ring finger on either side of the nostrils. Little finger opened up. Shanmukhi mudra applied on the face region of your body. Normal breathing. For... For Brahmari pranayam. Let's start together. Inhale. Inhale some more. Inhale some more. Inhale fully. Hold two, three, four. Exhale with a high pitch humming sound. Mm. One more round. Inhale. Inhale some more. Inhale some more. Inhale fully. Hold two, three, four. Exhale with a high pitched humming sound. See the impact on your head region. Mm -hmm. Continuous eyes closed. Relax with normal breathing. When you're ready, rub your palms, cup your face, open your eyes into your palm. Anybody knows why we do that? Opening your palms into your eyes, into your palm. Why do we rub our palms, cup our face, open our eyes into your palm? What do you chant when you do that? Yeah. So what happens? Why do we do that? The energy... Uh, the energy will go out of, uh, I mean, uh, out of us. So, a little bit of energy to be captured. We are, we'll open our eyes in our palm. So, that little bit of energy is captured in our palm. Correct. Wonderful. Yeah. So, what happens is our pranic energy, our uh, prana, is uh, flowing through our nadis. Right? We saw that. Just like how in a beach, the shore, uh, the ocean comes to the shore and receives back into the ocean. So, our pranic energy also comes to the extremities. What are the extremities? Our sense organs. Eyes, ears, nose tip, lips, fingertips, toe tips, the skin. All of that are our extremities. So, the energy flows to the end. end, uh, end. And if you open your eyes and your uh, nose, your mouth, the energy escapes. Or it can be captured, recycled within your body. So, bring your palms and look at your palm. That much of energy is available within you. Why lose it? Recycle it. That's why we eat with our sitting in Padmasana or Vajrasana or Sukhasana and uh, the um, on a mat so that the energy stays within the body, recycled and lost, not lost to the earth. Okay. So I hope that answers. So when you do this, we have Karagre Vaste Lakshmi. What does everyone do? Every day they rub your palms, cup your face, look everywhere and then look at your palm. Don't do that. Cup your face. Bring the palms in front of you. Continue with eyes closed. Open your eyes only into your palm. Then you see Karamadhyay, Karamuledu, where your chakras are. Okay. So Karamadhyay, you have your uh, palm chakras. You have the tips where you have your uh, energy centers. They all capture this energy emitted from your eyes, nose tip, lip tip. That is why not only your eyes. It should be the whole face. Then you bring it. It gets recycled. Okay. Now, all of you understood Brahmari Pranayam? Shall we move on? Okay. Next, yeah, next is our Udgit Pranayam. 
okay with udgit we will move into dhyan and conclude the session okay so udgit is going to be <clears throat> like this uh, okay this also involves a three level breathing so first we saw no that chin bindu udara shwasa chin maya bindu uru shwasa chest and uh, adi bindu which is your griva shwasa so this is known as clavicular thoracic and abdominal breathing so for abdominal breathing we will be holding chin mudra okay chin mudra which works on the abdomen then for uh, thoracic breathing we will be so there we will uh, we're going to chant akara ukara udgit means omkara the sound of the primordial the uh, rhythm the cosmic rhythm omkara which is actually a breakup of akara ukara makara and silence okay uh, can more of you open up uh, your videos Turn on your videos. Wonderful. So, Akara, Ukara, Makara. Uh, we are going to be uh, chanting. Uh, the Akara, Ukara, Makara. How do you write Omkara? And just show me on the video screen uh, with your finger. How do you write Omkara? Okay. Is that a language? You draw uh, three, you put this. Is that a language sourced from any language? Uh, Hindi, Hindi. Sanskrit. Sanskrit. Okay, we have uh, two options, Hindi, Sanskrit, but there is no alphabet like that. If you have to write O, you have to write A, I, O, O, that O, that O plus Ma, that is Om, right? Like you write O and M in English, you're going to write A, then O matra, then o, Ma o and matra Halan. And am matra. Ah, matra. Uh, ma with a Halan, o. Om, that is Sanskrit Om. This is only a symbol. The three is your symbol and the Chandrama and the Bindu. It is not uh, uh, any language. Like you draw swastika. Swastika is a symbol. Similarly, Om is a symbol. And it's called a Chinna. Okay. And that Chinha is three curves. The three curves are joined together. Okay. The first curve is representing Jagrat Avastha, your awakened state, which is interacting with the Vyavaharika. Uh, loka, the uh, transactionary world. Then you have one more curve taking you to Swapna Stiti, where you are in the dream state. Okay. And then you have the third, uh, third uh, curve, which is actually elevating you to Shushupti state, the deep sleep state, but in this uh, Loka only, Vyavaharika Loka. So you are in awakened, like, like your sleep cycle talks about uh, awakened state, sleep uh, dream state, rapid eye movement state and then deep sleep state where you have uh, alpha level and beta level. Okay. So alpha sleep and beta sleep. If you can get that alpha sleep, those who have tried uh, Silva method of meditation you will know. Try to read the book uh, Joe Silva uh, or um, uh, that uh, Silva method of meditation will take you to beta level alpha level even when you are awake. So that kind of a uh, breathing, these are interconnected. So, um, Jagrat state, dream state and Shushupti state. And then when you can detach from these and stay within Swastha, within yourself, there you are in a detached state for that Chandrama where you are in a Samadhi or a Turiya state. And thereafter you reach the Bindu state, which is the, the dot, that Bindu state, which is the true nature of that single cell, the cell from which you became so many cells that samadhi state that satchit anand state okay so these three together a packet with the vyavaharika loka they take you to the paramarthika loka the divine world the chandrama they elevating you to a yogi a turya uh, helping you attain samadhi and your turya atita that bindu will take you to the causal nature from where you emerge karana sharira the satchit anand state okay so three um, four uh, so, the chanting of Unkara is equal to chanting of the three Vedas. Okay. So, <clears throat> Akara with Chin Bindu. So, we're going to inhale, exhale with Akara. Remember, you're going to your Karana Sharira. Then, Chin Maya Bindu, the same Chin Bindu, the three fingers are pressing into the palm. So, this is Chin Maya Bindu, where you're going to do um, uh, Uru Shwasa, chest breathing. So, chest in, uh, as you exhale, you will chant 
U. And then you have Makara, Adi. So the thumb goes to the base of the little finger. The other fingers cur curve, cover the uh, fist uh, close around the uh, thumb and hold the fist. Okay, so the thumb should be at the base of the little finger, very important. So that will be your Adi Bindu or Adi Mudra. So Chin Mudra, Chin, uh, chin Mudra, Chin Maya Mudra, Adi Mudra is on your thighs. Left, thigh, left hand on left thigh, right hand on right thigh. Chin Mudra, Chin Maya Mudra, Adi Mudra. Then Brahma Mudra in the center of the lap, hold Adi Mudra with the knuckles open to the sky. Okay. That becomes your Brahma Mudra, the silence. Okay. So, when you are holding Brahma Mudra, we will chant Auma together. So, and all the entire column get energized. I will repeat four stages. First stage, only Akara, working on the abdomen stage. Second stage, only Ukara, that is on the chest region. Then third stage, Makara, the head region. So, Udara Shwasa, Uru Shwasa, Griva Shwasa. Then Brahma Mudra for Omkara together. Uh, followed by silence. There are four levels to it. Right? That silence. So each should be. All of us have been chanting Omkara. Om. O in some uh, ratio. Ma in some other uh, time interval. And silence or no silence. Immediately next Om will start. The right way of chanting is A. Ah, Equal to U, equal to Ma, equal to silence. Four levels to Omkara where they have to be chanted and observation of your prana rising through your abdomen, through your chest, through your head, elevating, covering till your Dvadashanta, that is your uh, aura. Where till your aura ends, till there you have to be uh, holding your uh, Omkara with silence. After Makara, there's only silence and there. Imagine. Your lithosphere, stratosphere, uh, atmosphere, stratosphere, and then silence. You have complete silence. You become one with the world. You become one with Paramatma. And you become one with the divine. You have awakened the higher self within yourself. That is what Omkara is leading you to. So we will continue Omkara. I will give the instructions and take you into a uh, guided meditation after that. Okay. Any questions, please ask before when we start. Once we start, we will be, remember the mudras, chin mudra, chin maya mudra, adi mudra and brahma mudra. Okay. So send. What about that vayu mudra referred you? Anything we have to do? No, not uh, relevant to uh, the omkara chanting. Okay. That is only for the throwing out vayu before you do this. Okay. okay. Uh, keep the thoughts away for that. The mudra session I will cover. Okay, let's start together. Any other question? Thank you uh, for the good question. Any other question? Okay. Can you can you please show the uh, fingers how you did it? I I think I lost uh, the second one. Mm -hmm. The uh, how you okay, first these, is this? Yeah. Uh-huh. Second is this. Okay. Okay. And third is this. Okay. Okay. Here Thank you have you. lung yeah. lung points. So when you hold mm -hmm. this, your chest lung points get activated and we will work on the chest breathing. So that is how it works. Okay. Second one is the smaller one, right? Second one. Second one. Is smaller in the sense? Like first one is this, second one is this, right? First second. one is this. Second one uh -huh. is pressing on the, all the three fingers bend and oh. press on that line okay. in your palm. Okay. Sorry. No, no. Got it. Okay. It's too early here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> thank you so much for joining. Uh, thank you, Sanchita Ji, for hosting the session. For My pleasure, Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Thanking uh, Sanjay Sai Baba for his grace and continuously guiding us through the session. Shri Guru Vyo Namaha. Now we will start Omkara chanting, connecting with the divinity within each one of us and with our gurus. Neck and back straight. Elbows relaxed, shoulders relaxed. Please stay on mute mode throughout.
hands and chin mudra breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out for akara inhale two three four hold two three four exhale with akara ah hold outside two second round inhale two three four hold two three four exhale with akara ah hold outside two normal breathing chin may mudra for ukara normal breathing ukara chin may uh, mudra lung chest breathing focus on the chest inhale 2 3 4 hold 2 3 4 exhale with ukara focus on the chest o hold outside 2 second round inhale 2 3 4 2 hold 2 3 4 exhale with ukara focusing on the chest o hold outside 2 normal breathing continue with eyes closed hands move to adi mudra thumb at the base of little finger all other fingers covering the thumb normal breathing for makara breathe in 2 3 4 hold 2 3 4 exhale with makara focus on the head region mm. hold outside 2 second round inhale 2 3 4 hold 2 3 4 exhale with makara Mm. Hold outside two. Continue with normal breathing. Hands in Brahma Mudra. Adi Mudra in the center of the lap. For Akara, Ukara, Makara, and silence. Okay. Every exhalation, you will chant all the three followed by silence. Observe the prana rising. through your abdomen chest and your head region above your head into your aura shrink your abdomen shrink your chest and shrink your neck region when you are exhaling normal breathing for omkara inhale 2 3 4 4 2 3 4 exhale with omkara a normal breathing second round inhale 2 3 4 4 fully expanded hold 2 3 4 exhale with akara ukara makara abdomen chest and head a normal breathing third round connecting with the divine observing the prana rise through the head, uh, abdomen chest and the head region connecting you to the cosmic rhythm through your aura take a deep breath in 2 3 4 4 2 3 4 Hold and heal your body. Two, three, four. Exhale with akara, ukara, makara, establishing a connection. Ah. Hmm. Normal breathing. Observe your breath. observe your mind observe your body observe every cell in your body 
observe every cell attained its highest the self manifesting the divine manifesting in every cell observe the pranic energy in every cell on a hyper mode see them shining see the light shining through every cell in your body throwing out all toxins revitalized re-energized observe this light permeating through your skin extending all around your body enhancing your aura hold on to this light hold on to this healing hold on to this divinity heal yourself Heal your family. Heal your neighborhood. Heal your state. Heal your country. Heal the whole nation. Back to the cosmos. Heal the universe. What we receive from the cosmos is return to the cosmos. Let the universe deliver to us, through us any seva that we are destined to. Let us become his instruments, a part of him, carrying him within us, enhancing ourselves and everyone around. Observe how high this energy can rise within you and how you can hold on to it to heal yourself. Celebrate this energy. Celebrate this light. Celebrate this healing with full gratitude to the divine, full gratitude to all the gurus who help us stay steadfast on this path of the divine. Observe in silence the gentle breathing within every cell in the body. As you hold on to this energy, I'll control with the shloka, normal breathing. Oh, Om Ghyau Shanti Rantariksham Shanti Pratavi Shanti Rapaha Shanti Roshadaya Shanti Vanaspataya Shanti Vishwe Deva Shanti Brahma Shanti Sarvagvam Shanti Shanti Reva Shanti Sama Shanti Revi Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makas Chedukha Bhagavave O Shanti, 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 Hari Hiyo, Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha, Hari Hiyo. Continue with eyes closed. Do not open your eyes. Rub your palms. Apply the energy all over your body. Do not open your eyes. Only when you're ready, rub your palms again. Cup your face. Bring the palms in front of you. Open your eyes into your palm. Karamadhyay karamuledu.
Thank you for the wonderful experience. It's a great journey and it's very peaceful here. Thanking the Guru. And thanking every part of the satsang here. Every person in the satsang here is very deep. I'm not getting the words to relate and uh, share the uh, <clears throat> what's nothing is happening up there. Everything is connected. Thank you so much. You can unmute yourself and share any inputs or a feedback. Thank you very much, madam. It's a wonderful session. Thank you, Sister Nandiji. Ma'am, thank you. For when we were doing the OM three times, as we went through a O and OM, we are expected to change the mudras, right? Yes. A, we do with Chin Mudra. Yeah. O, we do with Chin Maya Mudra. Yeah. Ma, we do with uh, Makara, we do with Adi Mudra. Omkara, yeah. the entire thing we do with Brahma Mudra. Okay. And that's what we did the last three. I mean, I was doing that. So just yeah. to confirm, that's how it was expected. Yeah. Yes, that is how. What was your experience? A very silencing, I would say. Correct. Very deep silencing. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, totally switched off to the world. Maybe the yeah. instructions were also fading off. It was not relevant anymore. And you could sink uh, to the self within yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yes, Dasji, you want to say something? Thank you, all. M. Das, you unmuted yourself. You want to share something? I think we can conclude the session unless anybody else wants to share. Uh, uh, namaste. Yes, I just Sandra. want to know uh, if I can get the recording for yesterday because I was not here. Yes, yesterday. yes. I think uh, Sanchita ji will uh, share on our group also. Okay. Thank you. Thank Very, you. My experience was um, nice but I'm not used to it so I was losing it with how to do it, but uh, that's why if I see the recording, I yes. can go with my own speed uh, and then thank you. Thank you. Yes, Rajeshri Ji, you're on mute. <clears throat> Ma'am, your session, we have to see a couple of times to grasp all what you have said. You are a little fast for our understanding but if i see this recording twice or thrice i will get everything whatever it was a wonderful session thanks a lot ma'am thank you thank you reena ji first time for you yes prana ma'am uh, last when mudra session i missed it when you conducted that i missed it i was out of station i could not okay not attend. no problem thank you yes Uma ji, even I feel the same thing because we need this recorder. We can understand everything. I can understand everything because I keep attending your audio session. But this <laughs> guide is excellent. Yeah, thank you. It so changes. It depends on, uh, it comes from there. Guided meditation, it's on the spot. It's not prepared. So whatever is uh, uh, the divine decides, that's what comes through. But it's very, 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 what to say. Um, and uh, explain Panyana Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Very, very, thanks a lot. Much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Sanchita ji, thank you so much. Sujata ji, thank you so much. Jayashri aunty, uh, thank you. All this will be practicing tomorrow and on yeah. the world, right? Next three days, uh, we'll be only practicing from preparatory till the end. Okay. So, so continuous instruction. 
and uh, only the uh, pranayama practical now that you know what happens you will be able to focus on the respective uh, parts of the body uh, what is happening within you you will be able to appreciate it and uh, connect with yourself kal practice eight eight and ho jayega upama ji ha 230 but it will finish by 315 ha uh, hardly 45 minutes okay okay thank you very much very good session thank you thank you, thank you. थैंक thank you thank you all shri guru bhyo namaha thank you madam thank you sanchita ji we can end, uh, conclude the session